Cat, and in this tutorial I'll show you how to make this stretchy cuff bracelet using beads and safety pins. For this project you'll need four different colors of seed beads. You can actually reuse the same color twice as long as you have another color in between those two rows. You'll also need some small safety pins, jump rings to match your safety pins, scissors, some jewelry pliers, and your elastic cording. Start by measuring your elastic twice around your wrist, then cut one piece to that length, then use that piece to measure a second piece at the same length and cut that one as well. Once you've cut both of those, grab both ends of them together and then tie them in an overhand knot. You may have to stretch the elastic cord a little bit to make sure that your knot is secure, but make sure you tug on it a few times before you keep going. Take your first safety pin and lay out your colors in the order that you want them. Start at the left, and do one bead from each color. When you get to the fifth color, repeat colors four through one in the reverse order. And that is your first safety pin. For the next one, you'll start at the second color instead of the first one. So since your first one started with white, on this one start with purple, then white, then pink, then black, and then start over at the first color. Once you get to the first color, repeat black, pink, white, and purple. So basically you're going all the way up to the fifth color and then repeating the previous four colors. So for the next safety pin I'm starting with white, then pink, then black, then white, then purple, and then ending on purple go back white, black, pink, and white. And you'll see as we keep going how this is going to begin to form a pattern and it will start to make sense after a few more safety pins. For the next one start with pink, black, white, purple, white, then purple, white, black, pink. For the next one, start with black, white, purple, white, pink, then back to white, purple, white, black. Now with that last safety pin, you finally got through all five colors. So since that one started with black, the next one I do is going to be the same as my second to last one, if that makes sense. So this one I'm starting with pink, black, white, purple, white, purple, white, black, and ending in pink again. So basically you're doing the same pattern that you already did but in reverse. So this next one is white, pink, black, white, purple, then going back, white, black, pink, and white. And this is how you're going to form that diamond shape as opposed to keeping going with the same pattern which would form a chevron. So this next one is purple, white, pink, black, white, black, pink, white, and purple. This one is white, purple, white, pink, black pink, white, purple, white. And now you can start stringing them on. You can string them on as you go, but I prefer to do a few first, and then you string them on using the spring side and separate each one with a jump ring. This is going to add a little bit of space because the side with the clasp is actually thicker than the side with the spring. And now you can see that diamond pattern is fully formed. So for the next one, you're going to repeat that second to last safety pin you did because you don't want to duplicate the point. So you're going to start with purple, white, pink, black, white, then go back to black, pink, white, and purple. Again, you don't want to duplicate the point, so you'll see how I only had one black bead in that previous safety pin, and then this one I've gone back to the two black beads. That way you only have that one black bead as the point that connects the next diamond in the pattern. And you'll just keep going, repeating the pattern the exact same way as you did from the beginning until your bracelet is as long as you need it. You're going to go through quite a few safety pins, so I recommend sitting down to watch a movie while you do this, just something that's going to pass the time. And then you just keep stringing them on, making sure that all of your beads are pointing in the same direction. Once your bracelet is as long as you need it, take the last safety pin that you strung on and move it over to the end of your elastic and tie a little knot to hold that in place. This will keep all of your work from sliding off as you do the next steps. Then some brands of safety pins actually have a slight gap in the clasp side. So if you're not using really big elastic, if you string it through that eye right there, there's a little gap and your elastic will slip out. So if there is a gap, just pinch that shut with your pliers and you're ready for the next step. You'll remember in the beginning we actually had two pieces of elastic that we tied together. You're going to grab that second piece of elastic that you haven't done anything with. You're going to start feeding it through the eye of the clasp end of your safety pins. Just grab a few at a time and feed it through. Once you've strung all of those through, you'll have something like this. 
and you're ready to cut off that original knot that you made. Make sure that you pay attention from this point on because it's very easy for your work to slip off. So grab each elastic and tie it to itself. So the spring end ties to the other spring end and the one that's going through the eye of the clasp will also attach to the other end of itself. And you'll want to intermittently pull on the tails of the elastics and then stretch the bracelet to tighten your knots. I tied two square knots on each side and I just stretched the bracelet, pulled the tails, stretched the bracelet again, and pulled the tails a few times. Once you're absolutely sure that your knot is not going to slide out when you stretch your bracelet to put it on, then you can cut off the excess of the tails and tuck that into the center of the bracelet so it doesn't poke out. And that is your finished bracelet. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and check out my channel for other fun DIY projects.